So, back in 1.89, France got themselves their first surface-to-air missile system, which is the Roland-1, as you can see here. It is a joint project with Germany, and Germany also has it, although in Germany it's called the Flaurak Pats It's It's the same system, it's on a different chassis. This is the same system here with the radar and everything. The chassis is obviously part of it, but it's somewhat irrelevant. Like the ADATs, for instance, you can put on a uh, Bradley or an M113 or uh, Striker or other vehicles. It can be mounted on different vehicles. We have it on the Bradley, but anyway, the, the point is the Roland system is the launchers and the radar and the guidance electronics and everything. It's not specifically the ground chassis that it's mounted on, but anyway. So... I have driven it somewhat. I started to make a first 10 on it. I considered making a first 10, and then I decided not to because Sam system first 10s and even any anti-air first 10 were just, they were just asking for trouble. They didn't work. You had to hope that you would see helicopters at the beginning of battles, which back then around 1.89 last year in 2019 was not as common as it is now where you see KA-50s and Eurocopters in just about every single top tier battle. But anyway, now that you are seeing helicopters a lot, and now that I'm not doing specific first tens on vehicles where I would have to spawn it in first, and thus SPAs didn't really work, I'm able to make a video about it. So I've been using it a little bit lately, and I got a few kills, including uh, the first battle you'll see where I got three kills. Um, so I decided, all right, I better make a video about this thing. So. Looking at the Roland 1 system for France here, it's a 10.0 SAM system. Let's check out the uh, guts here. Um, up to 40 miles per hour, not too bad. It's a pretty tall vehicle. The radar only shuts off. It doesn't fold down, so you got to be somewhat careful in how you use it. I mean, it's tall, and it's not very well armored, as you can see here. I mean, the best armor you've got, most things are going to go through that. It's going to stop machine gun rounds, but any tank that fires at you is going to have no trouble knocking you out. And um, the X-ray, whoops, the X-ray shows that the missiles are stored in the shoulders here, which is actually pretty neat because when it reloads, these doors right here pop open to the sides. And unfortunately, you can't force it to reload one, excuse me, one missile at a time. You have to fire both missiles empty. And as soon as the second missile hits its target or you lose line of sight locked to the missile and you stop guiding it, the launcher will spin around backwards and these, uh, the launcher arms here will swing down and actually maybe it doesn't rotate backwards. I think it just, ro no, it doesn't rotate backwards. It locks to the front how it is now. And then the arms swing backwards, downwards. And then the launcher rails pick up two new missiles from inside the cheek storage there. It's actually pretty neat. It's um, animated pretty cool. And then it pops back up and you're able to launch and guide. It won't... It won't automatically reload as soon as you fire the second missile. You're still able to guide it because you can manually guide the missiles or you can let the radar guide if you've got a lock on on somebody. But as soon as it hits and it detonates or you lose the lock, which happens if your missile goes behind a line of sight where the launcher guidance can see it, then it'll automatically switch over and start reloading. But you can drive while it's reloading. You can, you know, maneuver... You can't uh, aim your gun sight at something to pre-aim and wait for your missiles to come up and reload like you can with, like, most SAM systems or uh, AAA vehicles. But that's the only real drawback of it. So checking out the modifications here. I just last battle unlocked the Roland 3, but it starts with the Roland 1. And as you can see here, you've got... Uh, 65 kilogram projectile traveling at 900 meters per second with semi-automatic guidance. 3.3 um, kilograms of explosive mass composition B for a 4.32 kilogram TNT equivalent. 0.1 millimeter fuse sensitivity, so it just hits something that's going to explode. It's meant to be an anti-air thing, so it doesn't need to penetrate into something to do its damage. It's meant to be explosive fragmentation blast warhead. It's an anti-air weapon. It is not meant to destroy ground vehicles. You can, in a last-ditch situation, use it in self-defense, but it's only because in the game you're allowed to manually guide it. You really wouldn't be able to do that in a uh, real-life situation. I mean, I'm sure you could, but that's not the intent of this weapon and not what... You would be in bad, bad straits if you had to resort to such a thing. But 
In War Thunder, it happens pretty often. So you've got 38 millimeters of penetration at all angles and all distances, which is because it's a missile, basically. And it functions as an armor-piercing warhead, even though it's not. But, I mean, the velocity of the missile is going to act, make the thing act like an APHE shell, sort of. So anyway, the big thing is with the Roland 1, you've got a 6.3 kilometer launch range. So a lot of helicopters in the game can fire from beyond that. So you got to be careful. The first battle that I'm going to show you guys, I managed to sneak to a pretty good spot and actually get in a lot closer than the enemy helicopters would have expected and uh, do some pretty good damage. And it was very, very pleasant. But the thing you really want to do, as soon as you get parts unlocked, you can start working on tier 2 and you want to go... Probably for the Roland 3 missile first instead of going for FPE, such as I did here. Because you get hit by something, you're not, I mean, you're done. You're basically finished. The odds of artillery setting you on fire are probably the most likely scenario where you could use your FPE and survive. But you're probably toast if you get set on fire. So you're better off having the Roland 3 because the big, big benefit of the Roland 3 is not just its explosive mass which is increased and it's penetration armor it's armor penetration which is 10 millimeters better but the big thing is the 8.5 kilometer distance on the sams which at the same speed of travel at 900 meters per second that is great as far as i can tell it's the second longest range sam that we have in the game after the adats's 10 kilometer long missile range the um it's tied with Germany, of course, because they literally use the same SAM system, the Roland 1 and the Roland 3 missiles. So you get an 8.5 kilometer SAM for Germany as well. Now, the KA 50s can sit 10 kilometers out and fire at you, so you got to be careful. But 8.5 kilometers is pretty darn good as far as War Thunder goes. So you may have to push forward in the battle a little bit, but you should be able to get to within distance where you should be able to at least threaten enemy helicopters and jets it's a lot easier to get hits on them so i'm very glad to have gotten that upgrade and i can't wait to start using it so i this video is obviously slightly different than most of my new vehicle videos that i've done wherein i show you the vehicle do my intro and then drive it for the first time because obviously i've driven it several times for my uh rolling in fact let's uh take a peek at what my uh, record is in the thing i actually have no idea so it can't be too many battles. There it is. Rolling one. Okay, so I've driven it in 30 battles. 63% of them wins. But, I mean, that's no judgment on the vehicle because sometimes I'm using it to kill anti-air and sometimes I'm just bringing it in in a victory just to try and get a last-ditch cap and, you know, get some RP towards upgrading the missiles. But uh, I've managed to shoot down 25 vehicles with it. Uh, most of which you're not going to see in the video here because I only just recently started keeping the videos of the kills that I've gotten because I was I was never going to make a video about it originally when it came out, so I didn't keep all the ones where I've gotten kills. But I started a few days ago, so uh, we'll get into showing you those real quick. And um, that's probably enough of an intro. So without any further yammering on, here are the videos of Battles. The first three battles are going to be with the Roland 1 Sam, and then after that I'll have the Roland 3, and that's what I'll be using. So we'll see you in the closing thoughts.
This is insane how much this is dancing around. Hell yeah! Come on, just a little closer, just a little closer, KA50. You're safe. Nothing can reach you up there, nothing can even touch you. Come on, nothing can get you up there. You're so safe up there in your pay-to-win tank with wings and rotors. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can even get close to you. You're completely safe. There's nothing to worry about. Nobody can hurt you. You're totally fine. There's nothing to fear. Nothing to worry about in the least. You can escape. Nobody can hurt you. Uh oh. This is a slight concern, though. Oh, jeez. A tiger! A tiger H1. Do I risk it or do I just wait and hope he doesn't see me? Attention to the designated grid square. Attention to the map. I don't think I can actually do anything to him. God, there's two more helicopters coming. There are two more helicopters up there. Two more KA fifties coming. Excellent. Come on, lock onto him. Attention to the map. There we go. One down. There's at least another one around somewhere. I know there's at least an AH one Z somewhere. Lock him. Lock him. Lock him. There we go. All right. Okay, we got enemy air somewhere. There it is. critical on him? Did I, we get him? I think we did. We did. Alright. Another one. Come on, lock him. Beautiful, Gaijin. What a great idea making the missile follow the crosshairs, not the not the aim point. That gives us the end result of a SAM system that can't fire a missile in the air. 
That's great. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Well, that's actually a hostile. All right, we got four helicopters up. This is fun. This is lots of fun. It's gonna be some good shit right here. There's four of them. Stop! I can't even, I can't even see his image to guide this missile. There's one. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. There we nice. go. Nice. I saw that. There we go. First one did not want to lock. Oh, what are you, my friend? You are dead! Nice. I just went over a heli. I was just gonna say, I hear one. H1. Yeah, I see it, I see it, I see it. Got him. So there you have it, folks. The Roland 1 SAM system with the Roland 3 missile on board, reaching out 8.5 kilometers. Not too bad. It's uh, just a little bit farther range than the Tunguska has, actually. It's not the best in the game, of course, with that honor going to the ADATs at 10 kilometers, but 8.5 is pretty respectable distance. The biggest drawback is the fact, as you saw, that the... Missile guidance is now slave to the crosshairs in the center of your screen rather than the little circle of where you're pointing your mouse. So that has the, I expect the unintended of, except of course, unex, you know, unanticipated by Gaijin effect of you can't guide a SAM upwards above whatever the uh, maximum elevation is for the actual gun sight here. Even though this thing is a radar-guided missile, you can't actually guide it with the radar. It still guides based on where your crosshair is. Even though you can slave your crosshair to the radar, you can move your mouse higher than the crosshair can move. So which has the very, very negative effect of not being able to launch a missile straight upwards or at a very good elevation and not being able to guide it. Now, most of the time, this probably won't be an issue because you're going to have targets that are coming in low to the ground so they don't get detected. So by the time you do detect them, or if you see them coming, you should be able to fire a missile at them and be able to guide it all the way. The other problem is that a maximum range missile shot um, at a hovering stationary helicopter, as you saw early on when I still had the Roland 1 missile, the radar lock just drifts and dances all over the screen. I mean, it's crazy. I've seen radar scopes before, and when they're locked onto something, they don't do this silly artificial dance thing it's just boink picked up a target it's right here i'm just staring at it boink 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 are you gonna shoot hello hello human operator i've got a lock for you are you gonna fire i mean it's like that but it's a video game so you know i i assume there's a lot of that going on they don't want you to be able to just have a point and shoot super easy lock on a helicopter even though the helicopters you know have the opposite but whatever um, you can use this to capture points, but I would caution you to be very, very careful with it, as you really don't have the armor of an AMX-30. Not that the AMX-30s have a lot of armor to begin with, but this is based off an AMX-30, and it does not have anything close to armor. The other thing is, these missiles do not do a lot against, you know, armored vehicles. I'm sure you probably would absolutely obliterate any, uh, sort of, 
um, SPAA or light reconnaissance vehicles that you see, but if you run into a tank from head on, you're not going to do much with the Rolands. So there you have it. Thank you all very much for watching, everybody. I figured this video had gone on long enough. I could have gotten a few more kills. I would have liked to have gotten a couple more maximum range, 8.5 kilometer, like 8, 8 kilometer distance shots on helicopters. I just didn't really encounter any that I could fire at. So good luck to all of you out there and grinding out your Roland. I'll show you where I am on my modifications for it. So I definitely need um, the horizontal drive and the elevation mechanism to get them a little faster. I can't wait for smoke grenades. And one other thing that I think will be pretty neat with this vehicle that you can do with any of the SAMs that have a laser rangefinder is you get your rangefinder. This may not actually be a laser rangefinder, I guess. No, I guess it's not. But at any rate, you can turn off your radar because your radar is what lets... it. Really, all the radar does is let helicopters know that they're being locked up on something and they can look for a missile trail coming at them or a jet coming at them and react and dive behind cover or counter fire at you but what you can do with this is get your rangefinder unlocked you can take a rangefind on a helicopter that you can see say he's up here on your screen and then you fire a missile over here with your radar turned off you make sure your radar is off so it doesn't give him a warning fire a missile out this way let it get out a little distance and then suddenly whoop, swing it over this way and guide it in on target visually and you might be able to pull off a surprise on a helicopter that way. They're still going to see the missile launch. But if they see the smoke trail heading off this way, they're going to think, okay, that's not launched at me. And they might not take evasive action until it suddenly whips over towards them. And you might cut their reaction time a little bit. But anyway, that's, a, that's an idea that I have that may or may not actually work in reality with not having the rangefinder yet. But... There you have it. There's my modifications. I can't wait to get artillery for it. That will be particularly nice. Smoke grenades will be nice too to be able to dump smoke and back away from helicopter missiles coming in because right now it's kind of a big sitting target, but you can't do much about that besides try to kill the uh, helicopters before they get you. So thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you all next time and good luck with grinding out and operating your Roland Sams, everybody.